so this is a, a permanent struggle and which uh, so you said that you asked that how can we uh, obtain that i think the only way is by talking by communicating by providing a, a number of very different examples and some examples are uh, of course have to do with the uh, uh, transformation that is new uh, economic sectors which appeared and that can show really uh, made an impact, created new jobs, created new environment, improved the life of citizens. But at the same time, uh, to, to know that sometimes knowledge takes, takes a long time before it's really transformed into an economic tool. I mean, you have to take this seriously, uh, that is the, the effort which has to be put into explaining better how research is functioning is something which uh, is very demanding because you have to do it again and again and again. That's uh, an effort which uh, scientists have to accept, uh, but also you need politicians to be open-minded and willing to listen. So I think it uh, requires indeed some kind of, uh, for some countries, uh, quite a change of uh, attitude and even sometimes a change of uh, structure, that is how do people work together, uh, what kind of uh, authority does the Minister of Finance has over the strategy, overall strategy of the government. Of course, if you are in a difficult financial situation, if the debt is very important, of course then uh, the, the power of the Minister of Finance increases because uh, he, he needs to control things very tightly. But at some point you have to make uh, things understood in the proper way, which is to to say that uh, it's not just uh, expenses, it's investment. It's a very, very important question. And so some of it has to do, it's almost a cultural dimension. I think uh, in the Western countries, uh, not so many politicians have a technological or scientific training. If you compare this to China, for example, uh, if you look uh, China has a very hierarchical structure for the Communist Party. If you look uh, from number one to number 15, I think there are 12 engineers and uh, a physicist, uh, a mathematician, and, uh, and one, uh, one lawyer. Usually in the European politics, uh, there are many more lawyers than uh, scientists. And so I think that's a very serious issue. It, actually, I, I checked uh, in the candidates for the European elections on the French uh, parties. I think there is only one scientist out of all parties' uh, candidates, which I think is, uh, so this cultural dimension has to be addressed. That is, uh, there should be more people with a very basic uh, knowledge on science and technology, uh, typically with the engineering training, who should be involved. So that's uh, one thing. The, uh, the other point, which of course is uh, similar to this one, is of course how do you uh, make the evidence available to, to uh, policy makers. So a number of countries, I don't know for Spain or Catalonia, uh, have uh, in France for example there is a special office in the parliament which is uh, called Office Parlementaire de l'Evaluation des Choix Scientifiques et Technologiques. So uh, a part of the uh, coming together, both uh, deputies in the parliament and senators, who sit together to evaluate the choices. Probably there is a, also there a cultural change, but for the academic people. That is to accept that uh, transferring knowledge, getting involved in uh, talking to uh, citizens is actually quite important. And if it's important, it should be uh, acknowledged as a component of the activities of the researchers. So some uh, institutions have uh, been uh, definitely making efforts in this direction, not all of them. So I think it's uh, something which uh, I think needs to be looked into more carefully. And um, a typical example which I think has to be taken into account is that if you consider this purely, this kind of activities that is getting in touch with citizens or with a, a science policy, is considered just as a, an occupation which takes away some of your time, I don't think it's the right approach. For science, science needs to be evaluated all the time. So when you submit an article, there are people looking into it and saying, well, we, it will be published, it will not be published. And the reason why it is published, not published, is because people have looked into it and come up with a criticism, suggestion to improve and so on. So I think uh, for these kind of activities, sh the same should be true. So these activities should be evaluated as the rest is evaluated. 
So when this is done, then there's a better chance that such activities will be accepted as something which should be taken into account when you look at the career of people. Well, it's a, it's a very good, a very good question. I, if I had a solution, I think I would be very, very happy. I think, um, as I said, part of it is to reduce the distance between the two communities. That is, which means, of course, that these communities have to meet more often. They have to uh, actually, uh, as, I, as I said, maybe there should be some more interpretation. That is, uh, among politicians, there should be more people with a technical training, or at least that they have in their staff enough uh, technically trained people, uh, which is not so frequent, actually. And uh, so uh, this is definitely something which uh, actually should need a, almost like a, a plan to, to really uh, give a, some kind of a goal that within, I don't know, 10, 15, 20 years, then all these uh, issues will be addressed in the, in the right way. And from that point of view, uh, I mean, it's very much related to taking a long view that, as I said, I mean, not being blocked by uh, immediate uh, consequences. And uh, in order to, to achieve that, I think uh, one needs to, I mean, have this uh, discussion on such a topic uh, much more often. And uh, probably also the press is not covering this so much. That is this uh, need to have uh, scientific evidence put at the disposal of politicians, but also citizens. Uh, and so I think uh, one has to create some kind of a, eagerness for, for this to happen more often. And of course, it means also scientists have to show themselves more open to this idea, more willing to spend time. And we come back to the incentives that you discussed. I mean, how can you make people uh, more willing to do that if they have the feeling that the, actually the impact on their career will be negative? So you have to make sure that. So there is, on both sides, I think, uh, progress to be made. And, uh, a consensus to create that this is really needed if you really want to make the right decisions. Uh, we are just looking for the best possible ideas of researchers, so we just refuse to have any kind of priority. Um, but of course, it does mean we don't care about the uh, impact of research, but we want the impact of research to be measured after researchers have been given the freedom to develop what they want to develop. So for us, uh, I mean us meaning the Scientific Council of ERC, which has this responsibility, it's very important that the way we do it is people do their research and then we want to draw as much information from their work as possible and then share it with the policymakers. We don't want to do the policy. Policy is done by other people, but I think ERC should be a fantastic source of uh, new science of uh, really helping the policymakers to come up with a very sound science. So in a sense, we feel our responsibility at the level of ERC is more to definitely look for the best projects, most ambitious ones, and then to analyze the, what people have produced and then make this available publicly. And so for Europe together to act on a number of issues, it's totally indispensable that it acts uh, as, a, as a whole, really the, using all the resources which are available in Europe. And uh, in science, uh, there are really, if you look at Europe globally, there is basically no field where Europe is weak. So we have to take advantage of this strength. And uh, at the same time, we also have to mobilize the resources in the right way so that we get to the next stage, which is uh, uh, using this knowledge and these resources and uh, also the capacity of training people at a high level uh, towards uh, really uh, more economical activities, more innovation activities, and also get the um, uh, companies in Europe to rely more on innovation than they used to. And they are, some of them are a bit uh, conservative, they're just okay with the business, they don't want to uh, be ambitious, but some others are really much more ambitious. If you look at the speed at which the Big companies have been developing, both in the US but also in China in particular. It's just amazing in the last years. And at the European level, this has not happened at the same pace. So we need to accelerate this process very much. And a lot has to do with the, the whole point of your interview, which was about how do you, you link science and innovation and economic activities. And for me, the only way out is having better education. 
that younger people will be exposed much earlier to these issues and which actually, if you want to achieve that, the only way is uh, very early on, if you talk about 2030, to have the teachers for 2030 ready. And probably one has to rethink quite in depth the, the uh, training of teachers, because in a sense, accessibility to knowledge is much, uh, is much easier than before. I mean, if you ask a question on the internet, you can get the answer. But the key point is that you should be able to, by yourself, to check whether this answer is uh, reasonable or totally crazy. And this means that the training for critical, uh, critical mind is even more important today than it used to be. Education has always been about the form, I mean, really uh, training critical minds. But today it's absolutely fundamental. And though this should be a very important part of the training in schools, in very basic schools, but of course, the only way you can do that in the right way is by having teachers exposed to that much more. So I think for the future, if we want to be optimistic, much more uh, investment has to be made in the training of teachers. You have to attract very good people, so it means you have to treat them well, so that people consider this profession as really a very worthwhile profession, as it was maybe a century ago. Uh, and recently, I mean, being a teacher has been really a very difficult job with a, a lot of problem with authority in class and so on. So you have to create a new dimension, a new, uh, I don't know, uh, mobilization for, for, for really quality education.